to Powered by Education's live stream. We're here with um, Mr. Tucker today, and he's going to tell us a little bit about he and his family and their homeschool journey. Um, but we're going to wait just a couple seconds to see if anybody else is going to um, join us on the live stream. And then once um, we see a couple people hop on, we'll turn it over. Um, I've heard about some of their many um, adventures um, as they've homeschooled their children, he and his wife. And um, so I'm really excited to get to hear a little bit about that today. Um, in fact, why don't you go ahead and take it away, Mr. Tucker. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your family, and why y'all chose to homeschool. Well, great. Thank you, Jessica. And uh, it, it's uh, for you, Jessica, as well as everyone else. It's Houston, my first name. <laughs> um, I feel funny being called Mr. Tucker, but okay. No, the, uh, you know, my wife and I, my wife's name is Dana, and we, we have four kids. Our oldest now is 23. And we started homeschooling her back when she was in kindergarten. And uh, we, we started that journey many, many years ago. Uh, after we did kindergarten, we kind of did our own thing with her in kindergarten. And then we realized, OK, we, we need something that can kind of guide us because I don't know where to go in first grade and second grade and, and all of those kinds of things. Because we were thinking kind of how do we take school back back to our home? And uh, so we, we launched out with a company at the time was brand new uh, called K-12. And they offered a homeschool curriculum that we were one of the first three or four to sign up and, and purchase their homeschool curriculum for our oldest, uh, McKenna, who was in, then in first grade. And so then we spent some time with, with K-12. Uh, we, we, our other kids started coming on in the homeschool. And, and so we over the years, it kind of evolved to where we began to understand that, OK, we need to take this outside the classroom and outside the house. And, and let's begin to take advantage of, of being at home, being as a family. I worked remotely at the time, so we had the opportunity to begin traveling, going outside the house. And, and we'll get into that a little bit, I think, as as we move along. But to let you guys know, we, we've we've had many years of experience in the homeschool, as, as you can imagine. It's been a fantastic experience, but not always great. Uh, we, we've had some bumps along the way, and, and I'll be glad to share those, you know, as well to help you guys maybe um, minimize those or avoid them altogether. Uh, but we've, in summary, we've got four kids. Our oldest is 23. Our uh, oldest son is in college. So for those of you at that grade, if they go through homeschool, yes, they can go to college. Um, and they can get full scholarships, and they can get all those wonderful things that uh, come with uh, normal students in class. And uh, our next son is he's a senior and he'll be going into college next year. And then we have a young one that's 10 years old and uh, she's uh, she kind of rules the house. Uh, other than that, she is uh, she and my wife are actually uh, off at a uh, homeschool co-op today uh, already. So we, we've kind of run the gamut of, of what what to use, what not to use and uh, whatever I can share to help you guys out and, and inspire you. Um, I'm more than happy to do. And, uh, you know, again, my wife deserves all the credit in terms of what has been accomplished within our home. I just get to uh, kind of share that story. So if I say we, it's 98% her and 2% me. So. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about the different options that y'all have used. Have you used multiple for different kids? Um, talk a little bit about the font navigating those different choices and then the choosing of the choices for each individual because each child learns differently. I'm sure, as you know, you have four of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So tell us, walk us through a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, we start out with K-12 because we, when you first step into it, you feel like you need to, um, you, you need structure, right? You got to have the structure. You got to have this, someone telling you where to go next and what to do. And, and although we, we, we always kind of stayed outside that structure a little bit. It was nice to have this path laid out before us, knowing that when we finish K-12 first grade, we just go on to second grade and, and play along. But as most of our, as all of our kids came into the program um, and we started exploring other options, we, we've ended up doing not only K-12 homeschool, uh, we tried a virtual school for a year uh, with two of our kids in middle school. One was a decent experience. The other, you know, not so good. Um, and so we pulled them out after that. Our oldest has also gone through an online private school. Uh, so we've experienced online private school, online public school, homeschool. And then within the homeschool curriculum, we, we've used um, 
gosh, K-12, we've done the eclectic approach to where you're just pulling, you know, pieces in um, that, that kind of fill and, and fit the, uh, the voids that are there. And then uh, we've kind of settled in the last few years with our youngest into a program called Classical Conversations. Uh, we started out, I think it's four years ago with her on that. I'll be honest, when, when we started into it, I was kind of skeptical about the approach. I was skeptical about the outcome. Uh, four years into it, I, I'm a believer in what they're doing. I still haven't seen the outcome. She's, you know, 10 years old. Um, but I, I feel like it is one of those she will acquire many skills going through classical conversation that she wouldn't have gotten otherwise, um, you know, in, in another program, perhaps. And I'm not here to say one is better than the other. I think it's fit. And yeah. I think it is a personal fit. It's a personal choice. And whatever works for you, whatever you're excited about doing and whatever the kids are mostly excited about doing, then you're on to something because it can be the best program in the world. But if your kids don't like it, it doesn't matter. And so I, I think it's about fit. And so we've just we've just tried to work and look at fits uh, for each of our kids. Uh, we do it really on an annual basis just to make sure we're not missing anything or, or um, not open or aware to you know, what's going on. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about some of the uh, different resources that y'all have used and where you found those. Yeah. Well, you know, first, Internet primarily uh, is where we found it. Uh, we've looked at, um, you know, we've done some of the homeschool conferences and things of that nature. But primarily we found it on the Internet uh, in terms of searching. Uh, the, the story with K-12, when it when it first launched, was that we I was actually headed down to a meeting in New Orleans and my wife called on the way down and said, Hey, turn on focus on the family. You got to hear this story. And Bill Bennett, who used to be secretary of education under Ronald Reagan was sharing about this new curriculum that he was launching with in partnership with someone else. And so that's how we found out about that. So, you know, it's through the radio there. Classical conversations was more of, of just being involved in homeschool communities and friends telling friends and, you know, hey, you need to check this out. Here's what we're doing. And, and so, you know, we just say, check it out. Um, you know, the Internet can it's great. And at the same time, it's overwhelming because everything seems to be the best. Um, so I think it is it's a great way to open your mind to what's out there and then begin to do, you know, the homework as to what might fit. I would encourage families strongly to do the research and, and don't feel like you have to get it right on that first selection. Whatever you feel is best, go with it. If it doesn't work, lay it aside, try something else. If that doesn't work, lay that aside, try something else because, you know, it, it's, it's just an opportunity to, to spend time with the kids, to engage with the kids, to learn alongside your kids, to have those times together that a lot of other families don't have. And so what really matters is you guys are there moving forward in the learning. And, you know, it's just like if you're teaching your kid how to ride a bike. And if they fall over and wreck their bike, don't get back up and start pedaling again. You don't just quit and, you know, lament ever buying a bike. So the same thing with education. I mean, it's just make your choice, dive into it. If it works for a year, but not the next year, that means that it, it served its purpose, you know, during that year and just enjoy that and then move on to the next selection. Yeah. You talked a little bit about spending that time with your family and using the time together, navigating the different options, you know, as, as a family building and, you know, quality time um, together and uh, building that team. And talk a little bit about uh, some of y'all's adventures um, mm -hmm. through the, have that, having the flexibility of being having everyone at home and yeah. doing all those kinds of options. And even with, I guess, online school, you can take it on the road with you. Um, I've heard some amazing adventures about Disney world and yeah. things like that. So tell us a little bit about some of the stuff y'all did with the flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. Yeah. We, you know, it, it kind of evolved as time went along. I mean, we, we would travel some and do some and, and, but as, as our kids got older, one of our dreams was always to go and then just, a block of time at Disney to where you can actually go into the park and just not be rushed, you know, not, not, not have that and not even have to worry about the fast passes. You know, you can just go stand in line all day long if you want to. 
And so we, we, we were actually there in April of 2015. We had a, a three day visit. And I, I remember we were standing at Animal Kingdom about to go in there and we were talking to the, the guest, um, guest service person there. And we looked at exploring annual passes because to get a 10 day pass for Disney was this amount to get an annual pass, eh, not so much more. And so we just made the decision on the spot, hey, we're going to do this. And so we got the annual passes for all of our kids and us and decided that fall we were heading to Disney and we were going to be there as long as we could be. And so once you make the big decision, then all the other decisions fall in place. And so we decided we want to be there. And so we ended up, we stayed at a villa about, I don't know, 10 minutes from Disney World. And we went down in October for three weeks. So we got to experience the Halloween, uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween, uh, which they started this year in August. I don't, <laughs> quite early. But so we stayed there for three weeks in October. We came home for a week because I had some things I needed to uh, finish here. And then we went back and we stayed from November till like three days before Christmas. And so we ended up being there about 45 days. And, and when I say being there, we, we went to the park every day. I mean, every day we're in the park, right? And and we could justify it because when you get on a ride, you, you learn physics or whatever the case was. But the big thing was it was a building memories. And I'm a believer that if you take 30, 45 days and you spend time with your kids and you do things like that, it, you're not missing out on learning. You're actually, you know, elevating them to a higher level of what can be, what could be, and and maybe what they want to be, you know, as they grow up. But I mean, every day we, we were in the park, there were days we'd get in there at eight o'clock and stay till midnight and turn around and, and do it again. Um, one of the best days, and, and but this allowed us time to go pen trading all day long. You know, there, were, there was a day where we didn't do any rides or attractions. And there was a day where we just, we met characters and we watched the parade and, and all of the stage shows. So we, we could just go and sit and take in all of, all of the surroundings, which, I mean, if you can do that, I would just highly encourage it. But, um, you know, we we did that. And, and then at the end of that time frame, we decided we wanted to go back next year and do it again. But we wanted to stay there at Christmas and New Year's Eve because my desire was to, on Christmas Day, to open a Christmas gift and make a Christmas parade that afternoon in Magic Kingdom. And so the next year, we did the same thing. We stayed for about 35 days uh, in a row. And uh, we were there, we opened up Christmas gifts and then three o'clock we're at the, at the parade on Christmas day. And uh, so back to back doing that. In addition, we also had a three week trip out to Colorado and New Mexico. Um, we did treasure hunting in New Mexico. Um, it, it was fascinating because I've been, we've been watching a uh, expedition unknown and he had this, uh, uh, it was about Forrest Finn who had hidden a treasure and he's still alive, but he had hidden a treasure somewhere, New Mexico, Colorado, Yellowstone. And they had this uh, a person who had moved to Taos, New Mexico to live there in order to search for the treasure worth about $2 million. And they were showing, you know, kind of the scenes and the, the drones were showing the overhead scenes and everything. And it, we were just sitting there watching and going, wouldn't it be great to be right there doing that treasure hunting? And so, 12 months later, we were literally at that same spot where she was looking for the treasure. Um, we did not find it yet, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> but, you know, we spent, I don't know, three weeks. We, we went to Estes Park, Colorado, uh, Pikes Peak, Garden of the Gods. Um, like I said, down to Taos, New Mexico, which is absolutely beautiful, um, into Santa Fe. We drove. So you can imagine there were six of us in a car. We enjoyed the journey. I mean, it was, you know, 12, 14 hour drives, but we loved it. And the funny thing between the two trips to Disney World and the trip to Colorado and New Mexico, if you ask my kids which ones they remember most, it's actually the Colorado and New Mexico. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with them, but I'm just saying it's actually <laughs> Colorado and New Mexico. So. That's awesome. And so that's incredible. Um, that was probably one of my favorite things about homeschooling and yes. doing uh, virtual school as well was getting to go on those fun trips. We got to go to um, Pettigene Mountain in Arkansas and, um, you know, lots of other things like that. And so um, one of my other favorite things was the opportunities it afforded me, even post 
um, high school. And um, I think that one of – I mean, your kids have had some great after – high school and um, K-12 experiences as well, right? Or even during um, high school. Can you talk a little bit about what maybe some of the extracurriculars they did or some of the other adventures and opportunities they've had because they've had that flexibility? Yeah, yeah no, it, again, another great question. It, it's, we, you know, one of the things about homeschooling, when you look at the reasons why parents homeschool, I mean, yes, we want, we you know, want to get away from a certain place, perhaps, or we feel like we need to have our kids at home. But I think kind of that underlying piece is, is we just want to live life differently. I mean, we, we don't want to follow this, this, you know, subscribe plan that, that the rest of the world or whatever puts us in place on. We, we want to just experience life differently and we, and we want to do it together. Um, so, you know, when I talk about Disney and Colorado and, and, you know, 45 days here and 30 days here, but I mean, it's taking those day trips as well, right? It, it's going to a park and sitting outside all day when it's beautiful outside and, and the humidity is less than 90%. So you can enjoy, you know, being outside and, and just being able to quote unquote do school there or leave the books at home and, and go to the zoo all day when everyone else is in class, you know, studying for the ACT, we can be outside looking at the lions and learning about all of that, that experiential learning. And, and so taking advantage of all of that, then when you have the freedom that you can take off in October or December or February, because let, let's face it, if you're at home, you're learning all year round. Everything is a learning opportunity. Go to the grocery store and it's a learning opportunity, as my kids would say. Um, so yeah, my, my uh, oldest daughter, especially one of her, big dreams was to travel, see the world. And so we were able to take advantage of, of the online private school and homeschool at the time. And so she's visited places like Peru. Uh, she and my wife went on a Nat Geo expedition to Peru. They won that through a competition. Um, and they spent, gosh, I think it was a week, week and a half in Peru. Uh, she's been to Switzerland, um, Europe, and in terms of the Netherlands and Denmark. Um, where else has she been? Uh, well, she traveled. She went to Alaska. Um, it was fascinating. You know, we were in Florida, and she just she wanted to get involved with this. There was a company in Alaska that she kind of wanted to uh, take a look at and see about working with. And so we decided, okay, let's go to let's go to Alaska. So we made a decision while we were in Florida that when we got back, we were going to go up to Alaska and um, uh, you know see that part of it. I, I would not recommend going to Alaska in January. Like we did. I, I mean, it was you know negative five degrees one morning. And, and so when you're in the rental car and you've got your bottle of water and it's frozen and, and the snow that you kick off when you get in the car is still frozen. And I walk out and I tell the, the hotel clerk, I said, wow, you know, it is cold. And I go, oh no, it's a heat wave. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean a heat wave? They go, yeah, no, it's normally negative 20. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? You know, and the sun doesn't come up till 10 a.m., right? I mean, it's driving me crazy. But just being able to to step outside this this box or the, these parameters that say you have to do school this way and you have to you have to do it linear you have to go from A to B to C and when life goes this way and so why not just let the learning and and be part of life as opposed to trying to box the learning over here um, and not take advantage of of all these things and. I think so many of us in, in home, we almost feel guilty when we take advantage of all these opportunities because we know that so many people aren't able to do it because they're in class or they whatever. And, and if our kid's not sitting at a desk learning multiplication tables from eight to five, I mean, are they really learning? And, and uh, you know, we spend so much time in, at, at the school age trying to make everyone experts in everything. And yet when they get out in the world, we then ask them to be expert in one thing and we applaud the people that are. Um, and so why not just spend that time with our kids, helping them become better at who they are, as opposed to trying to ask them, you know, what do you want to do? Uh, I think that's one of the things, if I can, Jessica, that we did early on, we kind of stumbled into it, uh, whether it's our way of thinking, I don't know, but we stopped asking the question, what do you want to do? We started asking more of the question of how do you want to live? What kind of lifestyle do you want? And you know, when you ask a different question, you get a different answer. And I think if you, we, we tend to look for the answers and the solutions, never pay attention to what the questions are. 
Well, if we start asking ourselves better questions and, and questions that make us think a little differently, then all of a sudden new answers and solutions pop up that were there all along. We just weren't asking the questions to find them. And I think that's been our best experience overall is asking questions to make us think, um, to, to see things differently and to, to therefore move through life a little differently and, and just own that, you know? Um, yeah, absolutely. And I love that. I love that you're, you know, teaching them to think about who they want to be. And, um, I just think that is so incredible. And I think that's lacking in a lot of, you know, people in my generation and, yeah. Um, and I think that that's kind of how my generation is moving to, they want to know who they want to be and not what they want to do. And that leads me to think, how did that with your kids who transitioned from being at home and doing homeschooling and online school, how did then they, with that mindset transition into quote unquote, the adult world mm-hmm. and, um, either go off to, did they go off to college or, um, did they you know, take a different path because that's where they wanted to go and who to find who they wanted to be and talk a little bit about that transition. Cause I know that there's a lot of, there's a stigma around kids who are going from homeschool to then either a four year college or maybe a tech school or maybe not at all and going into their career. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm still trying to transfer into the adult stage myself. (laughs) No, when, when I do that, I'll, you know, maybe that'll be my last day. But, um, it, you know, it's there were positives and there were also growth opportunities. Um, the positives, I believe, are that once you become comfortable in who you are, then you can look at things around you that are different and still be comfortable with who you are. Because we're going to be judged. We're going to be criticized. We're going to be um, whatever, no matter what we do or what we say or what we try to be. So let's just be the best selves that we can be. And then the the rest of it will just be a normal reaction to anything that is done. Um, The negatives or the the growth opportunities, I think, were, you know, sometimes it is a culture shock, not in the way that we hear culture shock. I think for our kids, it was, okay, we're experiencing life like this. Why Why are these kids settling? Why are they... You know, you hear kids go, well, you know, if it, if it were up to me, I'd, I'd love to be a musician, but I feel like I need to get a real job. And it's like, why? I mean, why? Who, who, who told the world that this kid has to be this one thing? Why not go pursue something that speaks to them that, you know, we, we want to get kids engaged. We want them to um, to love learning and we want and yet. When they tell us, here's what I love, we say, well, we're not going to learn that. Let's go learn this. You know, I'll take take your love of music and let's apply it to math. Well, I don't love math. You know, I can't, I mean, I can't make myself love math, right? So, yeah, there's a baseline of information to, to be of help to us. But, you know, so much of it, I think, is we, and, and parents, we, we fall, we, you know, we have done the same thing, right? We're, but the idea is that we're, we're trying to protect or, or help our kids out. And so much of it, I think, is, you know, for us, it is we extend our concerns and our fears onto our kids who are not yet um, that fearful in terms of outcome. Let me go try this. If I fall down, I get back up and try it again. And, and I think the more we can encourage the kids to to fail forward, learn and grow and understand that, Failing is different than failure and let's just keep moving forward into all that God wants us to be. Right. And so, you know, I think that was kind of that culture shock, if you will. And and really it's just two of our kids. The other two are still at home primarily. So, you know, with our oldest two, she went to college um, and it, it was a college that should have been a place where people were elevating each other a little bit and, and doing these things. But the norm of even kids who professed Christianity, the norm of their behavior um, doesn't align with um, what you would hope that it would be. And so part of that experience was, you know, the, these kids are given an opportunity and a privilege at this university that they're going to and they're wasting it. Not all of them. And, and I'm not saying that, but, 
you know, the, the general movement in that direction. That's why, you know, 75% of kids drop out of college before senior year because they, they're going after something that really doesn't speak to them. And, you know, three fourths or, or 68% of people change majors within their first two years because they step into something that feels, you know, they were told to do. This is the safe path. And so I think it was that kind of an experience for our kids, mainly for my oldest. My oldest son is more of a, you know, he he, uh, he looks at life slightly differently. So it's, it's a little bit more of um, the, 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 the positive movement forward and not analyzing the, the people around. So his experience is different. He, he loves college and he's had a great experience because of it. And, um, you know, it's, it's just fascinating to watch all of that, but also encourage them that, you know, again, there's, the, as we just, we were just talking with our dog, daughter the other day, you know, uh, each person is on their own path at their own pace. And, as long as we allow everyone to walk on their path and their pace, then, you know, there's less stress in the world. Right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. If, as long as if you um, remember that everybody, I think that's great too. Remembering that everybody's going on their own path at their own pace. It kind of yeah. gives you a little, it, it's less worrisome for me looking at, you know, yeah. at everybody else. I think yeah. that's great. Um, so what, um, what have you gotten any negative feedback? I know that some parents think either from family members or from the outside looking in for homeschooling or online school. And how, how did you address the negative feedback or um, any of the negativity that you got for either going off to Disney for 45 days, which I don't think you should have got. I don't see why anybody would give you negative feedback about that, but yeah. talk, it, how did y'all address any of that as a family, as you and your wife, um, just as the parents are navigating, picking those two options. Yeah. Now you know, we were fortunate. We, no one ever was negative towards us at all. Right. You know, we never got criticism. We never got questioned. Um, it, it goes back, I think, you know, prior to is that no matter what you do, there's going to be people who criticize. Most of that criticism comes from their own fear when they say, I would never do that, I could never homeschool, that's probably the best decision they made is not to homeschool, right? I mean, it, it, I would never do something. I would never jump out of an airplane in a parachute. So the worst thing for me to do is get an airplane with a parachute. I'm not, you know, but I don't, I'm not going to criticize people who do, right? Um, so again, I think it's, it's knowing, knowing the purpose and why you made the decision that you did. Um, understanding that the criticism is not directed at you. It's an internal criticism that they extend to you. Um, and, and then just knowing, knowing that our charge, my charge, I've, I've got wife and four kids. That's what I'm responsible for. You know, that's my charge. And, and for my wife, her charge is, is the education of our kids. It's not the education of anybody else outside the house. It's not, influencing anybody else to like what we're doing. It's just taking care of what we have, what we're in charge of and allowing everyone else to either come alongside because we welcome anyone to come alongside us and experience all of this. Anyone could have come along with us to Disney world for 45 days. Right. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not the exclusive. It's just us, but knowing that if, if you don't believe you can do that, you're right. You can't do that, but we will do it. And for those who want to come along, you know, join the journey. It's, it's a fun journey. And so I think it's just knowing the why, you know, knowing why we're doing this, focusing in on this and then allowing that to permeate in such a way that we are not defending our decision. We are not trying to educate others on the reasons why we made this decision. We're just letting them be who they are and saying, we will bless you anyway. We will bless you in spite of, right? And we will be kind when there's not kindness shown. We will, we will walk the walk. Um, and if others don't, that's, I mean, yeah, you know, you can't control that part of it, but you can't control how you respond rather than um, react. And I, I'll take my experience, you know, 45 days at Disney, 30 days, you know, three weeks in Colorado, New Mexico, treasure hunting with my kids. Um, being in the car for 16 hours with my kids. And, and I think they would too, maybe 14 of the 16 hours. Um, 
you know, so, so I'll, I'll, we'll take all of that. And, and if, if that's what I leave this earth with, I'll take that far more than, you know, a lot of other things. So we were very blessed in what we've been able to do. Uh, so much of it is, you know, the, the decisions that we made to do these things and to, again, what lifestyle do we want to live as opposed to what do we want to do and what do we want to be? And, um, you know, going after, I mean, it's such a world of transition right now that you guys, I'm sure at your age are truly experiencing, you know, uh, Facebook was started back in 2004. It hasn't been around a hundred years, you know, and it may not be around in 10 years. There's no reason why it has to be around 10 years from now because of the world that we live in. So we, we educate our kids at home. We send them to college and they're preparing for jobs that may not be there. There's also another amount of jobs that haven't have yet to be created. How do we prepare our kids now for a job that won't even be created for the next five years? You know, the world of apps, how do you prepare someone to code apps when they weren't launched till 2005 or six? Well, what's that next thing out there? Um, and so I think it's just, again, it's preparing the kids to learn how to learn, unlearn and relearn, um, how to adapt to a changing world when the one constant in this world from a, um, you know, uh, worldly point of view is that change is constant and it's even more rapid in today's world. And so, you know, I, I think homeschooling um, our kids gives them an advantage because it works for us. Uh, just as I've spoken with other families, there are other kids who do better sitting in a classroom. They, it wouldn't work for them at home. So don't try to do that. And that's okay because there are good public schools out there. There are good private schools out there. There are good, you know, uh, charter schools out there. There are great homeschool communities out there. There's also the reverse of each. You know, I've met public school families that have criticized us and I'm thinking, you know, need to look closer, right? I've met homeschool families and I, I hope, you know, there's probably been homeschool families who have met me and go, oh, he puts a bad name on homeschooling. But, you know, but there, there's just, there's good and bad everywhere. And again, I think it, it comes back to fit, not best, right? What is the best fit for the family? And that may be different in elementary than it is as they get into middle school and high school. And it's okay to change uh, and adapt because you, know, you, you almost have to in, in, in where we are today. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, definitely. And I think that's a good point that you make about how the, the choice that they're in when they're younger might be different when they're older, because as you grow, you learn, you start to develop different skills and different learning styles and things like that. So I think that's a great point that the the choice may be look different as they get older. Um, as you've and your wife have gone through um, teaching your children and um, all of that, how have there been things with each one that you're like, Oh, we'll do that differently next year. Or um, with your first, with your first, your oldest two, are you now saying, Oh, we're going to do things completely different with these last two? Cause you're still kind of in that, yeah. Um, education of your children. You have you're not empty nesters yet. So, is there one big thing that you said? Oh, we're going to do this completely different with these two, or with each individual yeah. child, as you've yeah. gone on. Yeah, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm glad my oldest uh, daughter is not here. Right? <laughs> you know, when when you go back to what what we were thinking, because when my wife came to me, I mean, this was you know, it's 18 years ago, and. She said, hey, you know, I really think, uh, what do you think about homeschooling? Well, I, just like anyone else who is new to homeschooling, the first image that pops to mind is not this positive one, right? It's the one that's, I don't know. I mean, I mean, do we have to, I mean, you know, homeschoolers. Um, and so, you know, when you step into that space with your first one and you, you haven't experienced life like we have now, yeah, there's plenty I would do differently. I would have taken her on a different path because we were pursuing the academics more than a lot of the other things. Because again, that's what we thought was the right path. I think as as we've learned over time, academics has a place, um, but it's not the, it's not an idol. We shouldn't pursue it. I mean, if you want to go to to an Ivy League school, then yeah, you gotta you gotta perform at that level, right? So. 
it's going to require hard work. But if the goal is to get the get the kids into a, a place where they can learn and, and prepare themselves for whatever future they may want to pursue or be or do or whatever, then that opens up a completely new world. And, and over the last you know, 15, 16 years, college has taken on a different uh, different meaning. You know, bachelor's degrees no longer count as much as they once did. And, and that's you know, you're hitting that point now to where that is ramping up because the bachelor's degree in the next five years percentage wise will amount to far less than it does now. Um, master's degrees are now becoming a quote unquote norm, but you know, then you have all these kids who go out and they learn coding and then they don't have to get a bachelor's or a master's. If they can do coding. Hey, they, they're set in terms of a job until that goes away. Um, so yeah, there, there's plenty I, I would do differently. And I think that's what I'm trying to share today is that hopefully, you know, <laughs> for those who listen and, um, you know, maybe maybe the one out there that's inspired to, to, in essence, relax, I think. Relax and enjoy each day and understand that it's not about getting through all the lessons. It's about enjoying today. I mean, today is the day we have control over. And tomorrow will take care of itself. And so it is understanding that there's a place for the academics, but there's more of a place for creating the memories of learning that occur with having your kids next to you at home. And when they get sent off, they miss uh, the learning environment at home because th that, that was such a, a joy and, and, you know, movement. And again, when I say things like that, everyone, I hope no one is out there going, Oh my gosh, you know, well, we had a terrible day yesterday. I'm a failure and all of that. Right. It's, you know, I, I was telling, telling our kids the other night, we went to Disney back in 2010 for 10 days. And our, our uh, you know, when, when I think back to it, it was a great trip, right? I mean, oh my gosh, Disney, we got to see the parade, we got to see the castle. But when you get down to the, the details of it, well, the last two days, two of our kids were sick because it was in December and they got sick. So they had to be holed up in our hotel or resort uh, for two days. And so, you know, it's like that wasn't fun. But it's something that when you look at it on the whole, going to Disney World was fantastic. No one seems to remember those two days of being sick. You know, it's just not what comes to mind. And so I share that because when you when you go through this idea of joy of learning and, you know, being with your kids and all of that. The days where it feels like a struggle, the days where it feels like, you know, kids are sick or you're not able to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. That's a far better day than what a lot of people experience. And when if you maintain that that gratitude and joy that this is still fun overall, it's that overall push forward that when everything is done, the memories are more about how great it was and not the, you know, oh, yeah, I remember those two days when we were sick. And but even those can become stories. Right. So I think it's just relaxing and, and allowing yourself permission to not get it right, allowing yourself permission to. Um, to make choices that aren't, aren't always the best choices in terms of whatever curriculum you decide to use. And if you make a wrong choice, don't, don't beat yourself up. Just go make another choice, you know? And uh, that's why we go to the store and we try on clothes. We think this looks good. We go and we try it on. It looks terrible. Um, and so we don't beat ourselves up. We just go get another, another piece of clothing. Let's do that with curriculum. You know, I mean, you, you, you do the best you can make a decision. If it doesn't work out, you make another decision. Um, we do that on so many things, but we feel like when it comes to education that we've got to get it right because we're going to mess our kids up and it's just not the case, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming here today and encouraging our parents and us to um, think, think outside the mold and do things a little differently and be more, a little more creative with how you approach um, the learning process, because like you kept saying over and over again, it's not about um, what is the right option. It's what's the right fit and how do they learn best and then adapting the curriculum or learning style to how that child, how it best fits that child. And we can't thank you enough for coming and sharing y'all's experience and what you're doing with um, your children and it's still doing with your children and how y'all are adapting. Um, yeah. 
And so thank you so much again. We cannot thank you enough. Um, this has been fantastic. And we look forward to maybe having you on again to share a little bit about how the journey's going and yeah. keeping us up to date on that. Yeah, no, I, I'd be more than happy to if you guys want to have me back. I, I you know, I, I love kind of helping other people find a way through, you know, through a pathway, right? Because if, especially if I've been down there and I can either tell you the bridge is out or, you know, hey, this is a great way to go. And um, so, yeah, if it's something you would like to do, I'm more than happy to do it. And I thank you guys for letting me come on and share. Oh, absolutely. We were so honored. And thanks again. And um, everybody watching, thanks for tuning in. And we'll be back tomorrow. Okay. Thanks.